Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be installing a brand new transmission cooler for my Toyota 4Runner. So I use my Toyota 4Runner for off-roading and sometimes that transmission light does come on when it's in 4 high and that's probably because of my big old tires that I just put on. So what I want to do is put a new transmission cooler in to help it cool down when I'm going off-roading. Also, it's going to help when I tow my boat as well because that puts a lot of stress on the transmission. So hopefully with a new cooler, it's going to keep the temps down and prevent that light from coming on. So let's go ahead and look at some of the parts and tools we're going to use for this project. All right, you guys, these are all the parts and tools you're going to need for the project. Obviously, the transmission cooler itself, this is a Durali 8000. It's a 20,000 BTU unit, should be sufficient for our use case here. I have here Max Life Valvoline full synthetic transmission oil that you can just grab at Walmart for about 20 bucks. I have some extra transmission line over here that I bought from the local auto parts store. It's a 3 8 inch hose and I got an extra five feet so that way I can run it all the way to the uh, transmission. I got a little pick here in case the transmission line doesn't come off very easily. I have this PVC cutter that'll help me cut this transmission line nice and straight. You can also use a pair of scissors. Couple pliers to take off the hose clamps, side cutters here to help cut some of the uh, zip ties that come with the kit, and also some soft pliers to clamp off the transmission lines when we take them off. And then I have this drill here to remove the skid plate. And then here I got some extra hose clamps that I'm going to see which one fits better. These are all just the factory ones that come off of a Toyota 4Runner. The kit does come with worm clamps so you can use those as well, but I'm going to see if I can use these to keep it factory. And then I have a little cup here so when I take off the transmission lines I can feed the transmission fluid into here so that way it doesn't drip all over the floor. Alright you guys, here's a quick look at what comes with the cooler. You can see it comes with the cooler itself. It comes with a hose that's relatively short. Uh, mounting hardware where you can stick this through the condenser to basically hold it against the condenser. And then a whole bunch of worm clamps and adapters in case you need it. This is a universal kit. I don't think we're going to need these because like I mentioned we're going to be trying to use the factory clamps here that I have as spare and we're going to try to mount this right in front of the condenser behind that grill. So let's go ahead and remove the grill and I'll show you guys where I'm going to put this. All right first thing you want to do is take off this grill. You can use this little pick to help you take some of the clamps off here or some of the clips off. Mine are all pretty much already broken and really the only thing holding it in is the bumper at this point and the light bar that I took off and hopefully you'll be able to take it off without breaking anything. Alright guys, the grill's removed now and you can see here there's not a lot of room in here and for some reason my 4Runner has this metal pipe going across here on the condenser. I'm not really sure why. It kind of interferes with where I wanted to mount it because this is where most people mount it. So I'm going to see if I can go down a little bit lower down there and I'm probably going to be facing the hoses that way and running the hoses down towards this little hole right here. Alright guys, before you guys put the transmission cooler in, make sure you guys put these pads on first. Doesn't, I don't really know what hole I'm going to use yet, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be the bottom ones. So go ahead and just line it up with the holes the best you can. This will give it some padding when you put it up against the condenser. That way it doesn't rub metal to metal. Alright, let's go ahead and get it in the vehicle. Alright, so let me see if I can slip this through there. And it might barely have enough room, so we'll see. I might bend a couple fins along the way here. We'll see. Okay, well, that wasn't too bad. Alright you guys, I've been fiddling around with this thing to make sure that I have clearance on the bottom and the top. So the bottom, I can access the bottom too. And then the top, I can access this hole. That one's going to be a little bit complicated. I'll see what I can do. So now that I kind of pretty much like it where it is, I'm going to use one of these zip ties and just stick it through there to hold it. And then I'll show you guys the other side in a second here. And you might have to wiggle it a little bit. Alright. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the other side, which I can't really show you because my winch controller and this uh, radiator support's in the way. And then I'll do the bottom as well. All right, so I was able to stick it down here and just stick that all the way through. All right, you guys, got it fully secured in there. And you can see on the other side here, you can see some of the zip ties coming through, which is good. That means that we'll be able to just put in the other side without having to remove a whole bunch of stuff. All right, hopefully you guys are able to see and all you need to do now is just take this washer and put it in the other side. And just make sure you put it in the right way. This will hold this thing in and then we're gonna cut off the excess. 
So this side here goes against the radiator, and then this side here that says Durali faces the engine. Once you start it, it shouldn't be able to move anymore. Sometimes it's easier to get it from the bottom, on the bottom ones anyways. All right, you guys, at this point, we are done mounting the transmission cooler. The next thing you have to decide is if you want to run your transmission cooler independent from your radiator. And a lot of people, what they do is they just run the transmission lines into the transmission cooler and back through the transmission, therefore bypassing the radiator. And the reason they do this is to prevent something called pink milkshake. And if you don't know what that is, it's when the radiator fluid and the transmission fluid actually mixes inside of the radiator because of old age or the chambers just start crossing each other inside there and it ends up potentially destroying your transmission. So you can decide if you want to do that. If you do, you can just run the lines directly to here and I'll show you which ones to run or you can run it in parallel with the radiator. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I am running bigger tires and also I do tow my boat sometimes with my vehicle and I want the extra cooling power of the radiator and the transmission cooler. And if you actually look at some of the other vehicles like the Tundra or the Tacoma, they actually run it in line as well. Their transmission cooler is a lot smaller and they mount it right here in the front as well. So you can see Toyota actually does this as well for vehicles that require towing. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this new transmission line through where all these wires are coming in here. This is like the right by the battery compartment on the other side. So there should be plenty of room to run this. Now this is a little sharp but I don't think it's anything to worry about because I do have other wires here. And I'm going to run this to the top of my transmission line here. I'm going to go ahead and try one of these clamps as well, see if it works. Seems like it will. And what we're going to do is, this is going to be the line that goes from the radiator into here for extra cooling. So I'm going to go ahead and just stick that in there helps to lubricate it with some transmission fluid. That way uh, it goes on a little bit easier. All right, well, that's as far as it's gonna go. All right, guys, got one hose on. We're gonna move on to the bottom one now. All right, guys, there's the bottom hose. I had to use the uh, worm clamp because couldn't fit the other one on there. Seems the hoses are all different sizes on the outer diameter. So I just had to use that. And we're gonna fish that wire all the way up there and out the same hole as earlier. All right, the top one's on and we got the lines ran through that hole there. Also did the bottom one and ran it up to that hole as well. All right, you guys, here's where we're at. We got our two new lines run from the transmission cooler down here. And what we're gonna wanna do is now disconnect the transmission lines. This one's the return line, and the one over there is feeding the radiator. And if you guys were trying to bypass it, then you would disconnect that one, this one that's feeding the radiator, to the line that goes to the top of the transmission cooler. And you can just get a coupler, or what you can do is you can just replace the whole line and put all new line in there and go all the way up to the transmission cooler. It's up to you what you want to do. If you're going to do that, you might as well mount the transmission cooler facing that way. That way all the lines are pointing that way because the transmission is over there. And then this is the return line. This won't reach your new transmission cooler. So you can, again, get all new line and just run it straight to the bottom of the transmission cooler all the way back to the transmission. That way that line's feeding to the top of the transmission cooler and then it's going to go down and return it back to the transmission. And since I'm going to be doing it in line, I'm going to be leaving this transmission line here since I don't need to mess with it. It's still going to feed the radiator and then it's going to come over to here and then it's going to output here. So I'm going to tap into this one and put this one to the top of my transmission line. And then the bottom line is going to go all the way back to the transmission. So we're not going to need this one anymore since I got a new one that actually reaches all the way over there. So I'm going to go ahead and take the transmission line now. I'm going to use this clamp to prevent it from leaking everywhere. And then I'm going to figure out what to do with this uh, bracket here. So it should leak a little bit. Hopefully I can get this off still. And get your uh, cup ready or cardboard, whatever you got. Okay, well, it didn't leak much. So this is the return line. So what I need to hook this up to is the top of the transmission cooler, which is, in my case, this one here, it's my continental line. I kept track of it. 
So I'm just going to hook this up and I am going to take off the this existing clamp here so I can reuse it and hopefully it fits and just slide that on there. All right guys, that's as far as it's going to go on. This thing is really tight, so it's enough to get the clamp on there. So should be plenty. So I'm just going to probably just zip tie it to these uh, power steering line here. And then now we're going to focus on the return line here. So like I said, the return line, I'm going to be going with all new line all the way straight to the transmission. It's back here and I'll show you guys in a second. So I'm going to see if I can take off this uh, hose really quick here from the fan shroud. And it's going to be hard to show you guys, but you just got to put it in here and press the little tab. All right, so I took off this bracket here. It looks like I don't even have to take off the bracket from the fan shroud. I think I can take the sleeve off because the idea is that I'm going to put this new hose in here. It's gonna hold it and then feed it back to the transmission back there. All right, you guys, so that right there is where the transmission line is going into. You can see here, this is the line that feeds the radiator and right to the right of it is the line that goes back to the transmission. So we're gonna disconnect that and then plug our new hose in there and that should pretty much close the loop for the transmission fluid. Now, before I check off that line, I'm gonna see if I can try to take off this sleeve right here to get it ready for the new line. That way I don't have to worry about it later. All right, you guys got it separated. Just took some pliers and just wet it a little bit and pulled it right out. Stick it in here. Cool. I'm gonna go ahead and put this back inside of its bracket now. Up there, close it up, just like factory. All right guys, next step is to take off the other side of the hose here, and it's probably gonna make a mess, so make sure you're ready. I've already put my worm clamp on here, so I'm ready to go. There is another sleeve on this end to kind of help it from the bending here, but I don't think I'm gonna have enough time to take all that off, so I'm just gonna leave it without it. So, let's see. Looks like it's set up to be from that side. All right guys, after messing around for a while and using these pliers here, finally got that clamp off. And I'm gonna see if I can get it off now. It's probably been on there since the beginning of time. Cool, I was able to get this thing out. <laughs> All right, finally got it, guys. Put the new one in. Oh boy, that was on tight, guys. All right, guys, finally got it in. It was really on there, I'll tell ya. So let's go ahead and finish this job up. All right, you guys, we are all done down here and you can see the lines are just running next to this lower radiator hose. I zip tied it to these uh, power steering lines so it doesn't move up and accidentally hit one of those belts. And this here just curves back to here. So this outlet goes back to the top of the cooler. And then this new line over here, as you can see, is just like factory. I put the sleeve in there and then I put it in the existing bracket that was already here. And then over here, I didn't touch this line, but you can see here, this line goes all the way over there. I left the sleeve in here as well. And then inside of there, I had to use one of those worm clamps again because the OEM one didn't fit around that hose. All right guys, now that all the hoses are hooked up, we're gonna turn on the vehicle to check for leaks. I'm gonna shift the vehicle into neutral to circulate the fluid into the new transmission cooler. Once I've confirmed there are no leaks, I'm gonna go for a test drive to make sure the transmission is shifting fine and then do one final fluid check.
A few moments later. All right, you guys just got back from the test drive. As you can see, it's raining outside. What I want to do next is make sure that the fluid level is actually at the right level. All that fluid now has to travel through the new lines as well as the new cooler as well. So I want to make sure that the fluid level is topped off and where it needs to be. Now, if you don't know how to do that, what you want to do is fire up the engine, shift through all the gears, and make sure that the transmission fluid is actually at operating temperature, which mine is because I just went for a drive, and then put it back into park and put the emergency brake on and then pull the dipstick out and then wipe it clean with a rag and then stick it back in there and then pull it back out and see where the level is. Since mine's warm, it should be in the hot range. So I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly do that because it's gonna be really loud with the engine on and let you guys know if it actually is low or not. All right, so here's where it is at idle. And you can see here, it's way up here and this is the hot line right here and upper and lower, or sorry, lower and upper. So it's probably about a half a quart short right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add a little bit more in there just for peace of mind. All right guys, I went ahead and added that half a quart in there and everything seems fine now. It's at the hot level now. So what I'm gonna do now is spend the rest of my day putting everything back together. But that's pretty much the entire process to add a transmission cooler. Like I said, you have the option of bypassing the radiator completely or just doing it in line like I did here. It's really up to you what you wanna do. But if you live in really cold weather, which I don't, you might wanna just use the radiator still because the radiator actually heats up the transmission fluid as well. See right now this thing is burning hot. And as the fluid kind of goes in there, it actually heats it up and helps the transmission get to operating temperature faster. So you might want to go that route if you're living in like, you know, zero degree weather or you're, it's snowing or whatever. You don't want your transmission to be completely cold because of all the additional cooling you added. Well guys, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button down below. It helps my channel out a lot. As always guys, I'll leave links to all the tools and parts that I use down in the video description so that way you guys can find it easier. If you guys have any questions, let me know down in the comments below. If you guys like videos like this, check out my channel. I got a lot of other videos on mods on the 4Runner, so make sure you check that out. If you don't want to miss any of my videos, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell, and I'll see you guys in the next one.